Let's begin by looking at Prussia's geopolitical situation at the start of the campaign. Prussia owns two regions. There's Brandenburg in the west and East Prussia over on in the east. The bad news is that those two regions are divided by this region of West Prussia, which is um, owned by Poland at the start of the game. And the problem there is that if you click on one of your armies, this, you'll see that um, it can't march between East Prussia and Brandenburg. So you have no freedom to transfer troops between the two regions in your country. We might be able to negotiate an access treaty that enables our troops to march through Polish territory. But the real temptation, I'm sure, for new players is to immediately march this army into Gdansk and uh, annex West Prussia. The problem is with that, that it's going to start a war with Poland. And the war with uh, Poland in the opening turn of the game might not be the best strategy. West Prussia itself is not a particularly um, valuable region, so apart from the awkwardness of moving troops about, it, there's no real value in taking it right at the start of the game. And um, unlike Prussia, which only has two regions, Poland has four regions at the start of the game. Plus, it has Courland as a protectorate in the east, and it has Saxony as a protectorate in the west. So, altogether, Poland can call on the resources of six regions to Prussia's two. So, starting a war with Poland on turn one of the campaign might not be a good idea. It's going to be a long and protracted war, and you're going to be fighting an uphill battle all the way. To the south is the uh, Empire of Austria, Austria-Hungary. Um, and we actually want to take possession of Silesia. It's one of our gold provinces. And once again... Um, Silesia at the start of the game is virtually unprotected, so there is a temptation just to march in and take it. But, just like Poland, Austria is no weak um, state just to be um, walked over by Prussia. Uh, Austria begins the game with six regions. It doesn't have any protectorates, but it still has six regions providing it with income and troops. So, starting a war with Austria over Silesia on turn one is also probably not a good idea. In the west, the border is um, shared with the electorate of Hanover. Now, Hanover <coughs> is quite a weak um, country faction. It only has one region. Um, and its army is classified as weak and its ec economy is moderate. So it would seem on face value to be ripe for the plucking and it's one of our goal regions. The problem with Hanover is it has very powerful friends. It's allied with Great Britain um, and we may not want to start picking fights with Great Britain on turn one of the game. So, continuing the um, <coughs> bad news, let's look at Denmark. Now, Denmark actually doesn't border Russia at all. They're, they're, they're the slight neck of land there, which is owned by Hanover. So, we can't actually attack Denmark, even if we wanted to, because we don't have a navy. Um, unless we're going to teach our soldiers to swim, we're not going to have to get to them. But Denmark itself, anyway... Um, is larger than Prussia. It has three regions as opposed to two. And once again, 
it has powerful friends. It's uh, allied with both Poland and Russia. So um, attacking Denmark, even if we could, might not be a good idea. We might be able to start a major coalition war. Looking to the north, across the Baltic Sea, we have the Kingdom of Sweden. Uh, same story really, Sweden, four regions to our two. Its army is considered mighty, its uh, economy is rich, and uh, without a navy we can't get to it anyway. In actual fact, if we start trouble with Sweden, they're more likely to be a nuisance to us than we are to them. So it's probably best to leave them alone. So to sum up, the geopolitical situation of Prussia at the start of the campaign isn't particularly good. It's, it has powerful neighbours, such as Poland and Austria, who are much stronger than it is militarily and economically, and are not particularly friendly. And those neighbours that it does have such as Saxony and Hanover, who are weaker than it is and could be targets for annexation, have powerful friends um, who aren't going to take kindly to any aggression against, against them. So whilst the game designers have deliberately created the temptation to start a war on turn one of the Prussian campaign, either by invading West Prussia, or by invading Silesia, or Saxony, or Hanover, and therefore starting a war straight off. And even though Miss Whiplash seems to suggest that that might be the way to go, uh, I'm going to resist that temptation. Um, I've tried it in the past, and usually it gets you involved in a major war right from day one, and it just drains your economy. Instead I'm going to play my cards quite close to my chest, I'm going to stay out of trouble, let my neighbours argue and start arguing amongst themselves, and I'm going to invest in strengthening my economy to offset the advantages enjoyed by my neighbours. So hopefully whilst they're spending their money on troops and all the sorts, I'll be spending my money on building up my economic um, advantages. If I can get away with that for a few turns um, and let the situation evolve around me then I'm hoping that uh, events will occur which will give me a definite advantage um, in one or other of the areas of opportunity that surround the borders. Um, but we'll play it by ear because um, each Prussian campaign tends to go a different way so there's no way of knowing in advance what might happen. The economic situation of Prussia is really quite simple compared to other factions in the Empire Total War. It doesn't have a navy, it doesn't have any colonies, therefore it's not really in a position to even consider um, importing trade goods and starting um, a major trading empire. It's going to have to rely upon its own internal um, economy to survive. The good news is that um, both uh, Brandenburg and uh, East Prussia have quite thriving internal economies. The, the, the amount of uh, money they're making is not bad even to start with, but it can be enhanced uh, by some shrewd investment. Prussia also enjoys some other advantages over its neighbouring factions. It's an absolute monarchy, um, which might seem a strange advantage to quote, but it does mean that um, you get to hire and fire your ministers um, at will. So, for instance, we have our friend here, Otto, who's in charge of the navy, the non-existent navy, um, who is morally impaired and clearly not fit to hold high office, we can just sack him and replace him with somebody better. Um, we don't have to wait for the electorate to agree to that. You don't have to put up with um, corrupt politicians. So that's one advantage. 
We also have a slight advantage on the military research side. We already have uh, plug bayonets researched, which is quite good. And we also have an extremely um, good gentleman here, um, Gottfried Leibniz, who's a, a very good researcher. He's a banking genius. And he's also got an emeritus professorship, whatever that is, which gives him an advantage. Um, so we're going to be researching quite uh, quite efficiently right from day one. Which means the longer we can stay out of trouble with our neighbours, the more advantage we should gain. Um, and that's the basic strategy. Wait on events and make the most of the time we've got before things kick off for real. So we're ready to, um, to move on to turn one of the campaign. Um, but one of the problems I've got with these videos is that um, YouTube only allows me 15 minutes per video. And I've already recorded some of the um, opening sequences for turn one. And uh, the first um, clip um, uh, is taking the video over 15 minutes. So I think the only way to approach this is to break down the... Um, the uh, filming into separate videos of one turn each probably uh, to try and uh, keep it all together um, so I'm going to end this video here and then the next video will be turn one which I've already started recording and I'll put those clips into that sorry about that but then until YouTube decides that I'm reliable enough to give me unlimited video um, length I'm going to have to keep breaking these videos down into small, small sections. So, um, I'll see you in the next video and we'll look at turn one of the actual campaign.